It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. Boo. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to another show of Dad's Lads and. Oh, wait, I've forgotten. Kebabs. Mickey boy. How you doing, my geezer? Oh, mate. I'm all right, mate. That's What's good. What's the you? Because I am Thank- fucked. Hey, do you know how many steps I did yesterday? Have a guess. Oh, you're always well, going to beat me. I, I know what? I did. I, uh, this is a 22,000. 22,000. 22, I did that before lunch. Oh, fuck it. 42,000. Just less. 41,000. 39. <gasps> nearly 18 miles yesterday. I was mowing all day long. Fucking... I was like, wow. God, do that long work, man. My man's on that long work, bro. <laughs> I, I needed to do the 40, but it was like just before 10 and I was in bed and I had 800 left and I thought, I'd love to make 40, but I'm Dumb. going to bed. I'm fucked. <laughs> you might so, have. The thing is, how accurate is it? You could have done You could have done the 40. Well, sometimes if you watch your, your Fitbit as you walk in, it doesn't go, it doesn't necessarily tick all the time and change. It's not so tickling maybe, it. It's not tickling the old feathers, so no. So maybe, no. who knows, but yeah, I thought, fuck. Well done, be. though. That was good, man. That is some serious mileage. That's nearly a marathon. I mean, just, that's, that's, that's like 15 quid in your tank. <laughs> yeah, that's, I could walk to fucking... Milton Keynes from it, isn't that? That is that, yeah. It's probably about... Well, it's there. It's probably there and about halfway back. I mean, that's crazy. We're pushing the lawnmower. <laughs> You're getting your steps in there, bro. You're getting your exercise done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Four Which days, is good. Four days, I get about 25. So I'm getting 100,000 just in four days. And then Friday, oh. Saturday, Sunday, it's a lot less. Weekend, that's like, some... fuck all. <laughs> Yeah, but who cares? You'll get you'll, exactly, you'll get yeah. you're technically getting the average person's four days in one day. Like yesterday, yeah, that's fucking. If I get my, I have to put effort in to get my twelve thousand. Yeah, but you 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 have a desk job, so that's the thing. Yeah. It's but when I do it, I do it on a treadmill every day. Yeah, no, yeah. Because I, I, otherwise I don't get them in, like, I, not because of, like, through my faults, but I'm either working, being a dad, working, being a dad, sleeping, you know. No kebab. No kebabs. No the kebabs. Kebab. It, uh-huh. the, honestly, I tell you what, I've stopped since I've been, one, laying off fizzy drinks. Yeah. Two, trying not to eat any sugars my poos have gone down i'm not pooing so much you know it's like being on keto yeah one every i'm like every, every day one a day yeah and it's not like it's not like a it's just a it's a long process it's a fucking solid screamer it's a sit and wait job it, you know what i mean it's a yeah. doctor's waiting room you know it's there and then when it's finally coming out, you have to push. And when I was on keto, I used to I used to cry, like oh, as it's that final push when it's fucking that wide, that <laughs> round, and it's, it's like, not that bad yet. That's fucking stretching, and <laughs> I. It's not t- touching cloth. It ain't that bad yet. It's like, it's like fuck me. <laughs> oh, brother, how you been? I've not been good. Hence, no episodes for three weeks. Uh, I've cancelled a couple of... Two weeks, yeah, three weeks. I've cancelled a couple with you. Uh, just don't want to talk. And I'm That's not okay. going to fake being happy and, and being interested what in you? what, whatever you're saying. So you know. <laughs> You're not at the best of times, man. <laughs> No, but we were supposed to film last week, definitely, and I thought, nah. That's okay. Not in the mood. That, Just, I feel like that's real, though, right? I'd, I'd much rather you do that than come to come to an like to do an episode and you just like listen. You just fucking. I'll just go along with what you're saying, thanks. I can't be asked. I'd rather yeah. you say, well, listen, let's just let's just park it for a couple of weeks. 
I've got a couple of reasons why I think this happened. Obviously, weeks ago, when you said I'm on my period, was sort of the start of the downturn when my negativity. And that was back. that. That was, by the way, that was that was out. Of, that was like kind of out of love. That went out of, you know, that weren't me just fucking taking the piss. That was me saying, you know, enjoy yeah. it, mate. Just just <laughs> sit sit in your own shit, man. But it had it had been a couple of years, nearly a couple of years since I'd felt like that. Uh, that that was a regular occurrence for me. To be fair, for most days of most weeks, it was like that. But so this this is like oh fuck's sake, it's back again. But in a weird way, I like the negativity, the the badness, the low thoughts, because it's sort of not comforting, but it I don't know. It's a bit like oh it's back again. I quite like it if you know what I mean. It's this weird. Not in a bad way, because obviously I'm not going to top myself. Because, but I, it's like a, I like going through stages of feeling sorry for myself. Well, I used to anyway. Don't mm -hmm. I don't anymore. But obviously, it came back. But anyway, this weekend just gone. Well, it would have been two weekends by the time you guys yeah. listen and watch this. I was at um, I was going away to Wiltshire for a two day paranormal convention, okay. Paramount Twenty Four. Uh, hosted by the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre in Hinkley. Now, I was going away with Mark and Rich, as I always do, West London Paranormal. And That's a I lot of plugs you've just plugged. It's a lot of fucking, I've got to get them all out here. <laughs> Obviously, going away, I know I'm, I'm meeting them there, but there was a few things. I Initially, I was just going straight there to the hotel, getting up at really early Saturday morning driving there because they start initially I thought it started at nine like the first talks throughout the day but it actually 10 o'clock so we had a bit of leeway um but then they said oh we can meet for breakfast and services I thought all right then but the services they wanted to meet at were nowhere near where I, the direction I was going because they're obviously coming from London cutting straight mm. across where I'll be coming down through Oxford through Swindon coming that way through the shit, basically. Yeah. So they wanted to meet up at Membry Services. So I thought, all right, then. Hour and 40 minutes to get to there. And then an hour from there to the hotel. I thought, all right, then. Fair play. I wasn't really excited. I was thinking of not just not going. I was thinking, how could I... What excuse could I make to not go? Because I didn't want to be around people. As, as good as it would have been, I didn't want to be around people. And I thought, how could I, should I just turn my phone off on Friday and not speak to anybody? Shall I say I've got car issues, but then they'd probably come and pick me up. So I'd still have to go. And then I was just trying to figure out, oh, I don't really want to go, but I'm going to have to go and I'm sure it'll be good. That's just how my brain works. And then on Thursday, I was getting a bit excited, like planning stuff, things have started. I ordered some bits and that to take with me. So I thought, oh, that's good. I was getting excited about it. And then Friday came, I finished work, and I just had time to sit and think about it. And I thought, oh, I don't want to go again. I'm not excited. And I was just like, oh, how can I do this? But I'm going to have to go because I've said I'm going. I've already paid. I paid for my hotel, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, fuck's sake. Well, anyway, all ready to go. So the next morning, heading down to memory services. They got there about 20 minutes before I was due to get there. So they, they popped inside to have a look round. I pull up, yeah, and as I was joining the M4 from the A420, I was thinking M4 London, Reading that way, M4 South Wales, Swindon that way, and I thought, I need to go that way to the hotel. But if I go that way, that's back to London. And I'm thinking, if I go back that way, then they're going to be coming this way. And I thought, am I going to be on the right side of the fucking motorway? So I pull in there on my side, heading back towards London. I got out for a piss and Mark said, oh, he's, we're outside. I'm like, all right. There's about four cars in the car park. There's fucking no one there. And I'm thinking, oh, I was fucking fuming. And so, I, so I messaged him saying, I think I'm on the, the, uh, the wrong side. And then Rich was sending me messages. Oh, if you followed the, the directions I gave, you're not the sat nav. He'd have made it. And I fucking nearly threw my phone. I was fucking fuming. And I said, I said, I'm just going to fucking go home. I was, I was literally in my car, fucking effing and jeffing, shouting at myself, thinking I'm going home.
fuck it, fuck this. And then I just put the hotel in, in my sat nav, and luckily, it was only the next junction was like three miles. So it was like three minutes. I did a look, did a UE off, back on again, and went to meet them at the services. And I, I just was, I'm just not in the mood to be like taking the piss out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, know I, it, I, I know it's all out of love and all that, and funny and banter and all that, which is fine. But the way I'm feeling, I said, "Look, you're lucky I'm here." I said, "Cause I'm fucking going home." <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, we got to the hotel. Fucking brilliant. Met loads of people I've met before. Some people I hadn't met. You know, when you're you're friends with people on Facebook, you never never met them. Yeah, never met them, but you do, and they're really lovely, and they have got some good stalls there. Bought some bits. Um, talks were brilliant. We had a quiz on the Saturday night, and yeah, then I had a past, had a I had a past life regression on Sunday afternoon. Oh, I was, bit, I was a bit worried about the boys had already booked theirs, but I hadn't booked mine. But I saw Friday night that there was one available for Sunday, so I booked it. Mm. Do tell, yeah, yeah. I'd yeah, never, yeah. I'd never been hypnotised. I was thinking. If, you, if they go through your past lives, who do they bring back? Are they bringing back 1830s Mickey? Is it going to be 1947s Mickey? Or am I just going to come back with all my memories and everything? I didn't really know how it worked. But anyway, I, I think I was the last one of the day. So I, I sat there, put you into sleep, and it feels like your body is full of... The only way I can describe it is... It was like numb and it felt like I was in acid, like acid going through my body. It was completely numb, but I could feel myself, if that makes sense. So he started putting me through the the deep sleep, um, all that sort of stuff. Go to, go to your happy place and then go to 2024, your house, stand outside, describe what you see and then slowly drift up. And I think, okay, then maybe this is how you come back. Like you come back down to your house and then you're back in the room sort of thing. Well, yeah. And then he said, oh, you're going to go, like uh, your subconscious will make a call. And I was tired today, fucking hell. You've been sleeping, boy. I've, I've been a busy day, boy, but yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, he said, your subconscious is going to create a corridor, or a bright white corridor. And there's going to be rooms off it. And then I said, oh, there's three rooms. Like, either side and the end. Really long end corridor. And it, maybe that means there's three lives I've had, I don't know. And he said, which, which life do you, like, the door to which life is the strongest? I said, oh, left one. So, I went to the left one. He said, it's going to open. The door opens. He said, I go inside. So, I went inside. And it's black. He said, what do you see? I said, nothing. I said, everything is black. He said, keep looking around. I said, the room is huge. I said, but there's nothing here. And I'm looking around and I'm searching. There's nothing else in the room. There's nothing there at all. Then the mist starts appearing and it's all like foggy and, but there's still nothing there. And then he said, oh, just keep searching, keep thinking. And then suddenly it was all bright and I was, there was field either side of me and I was walking down some dusty like path walking down the hill yeah and I'm like ah oh, okay obviously I'm like <laughs> start thinking the chair oh, that sounds mental. and um, he said oh what are you wearing and I said oh I've got I've got like these leg guards on and these like shorts but they're not shorts they're like made of metal and all this stuff and he goes oh what what age are you? I said, oh, I'm 35. And I'm like, okay. he said, okay then. And he's saying, oh, what what job do you do? I said, oh, I'm in a farm. I'm like hacking away crops, like big grass or whatever. Yeah. In, the, in them scythe things. And I'm like yeah. tying it up, putting it on these carts and moving it. He said, what year is it? I said, 1310. I thought, fucking hell. And, um, and he goes, oh, whose farm is it? I said, it's my farm. It's my farm. And he goes, oh, so go back a few years. So you're like 10 or whatever. With your family in your house, where do you live? I said, oh, I live in a hut with straw, uh, 
like beds and that and like little wooden benches and that like the little men in the jungle that make the things on yeah, Facebook yeah, yeah. yeah like that um, and then he said oh have you got family I said yeah mum and dad described them my mum was called Josephine can't remember if I said the dad's name or not I'm not sure and uh, I had two brothers two sisters uh, one of the sisters had blonde hair the other had black hair and one of them was called Kathleen can't remember the brothers names I don't think I may have said it I'm not sure I've not seen the footage yet um, and yeah and he said I'll oh, go forward to like your 20s I said oh, I'm working on the farm with my dad we're like working together and because I'll go to the like your the, the late 20s and I goes, oh I've met a girl and he goes, oh, how did you, how did you meet her? And I said, oh, she was, she fell out of a hayloft, like in the, in the, in the farm on the fields, and and I like helped her. And I said, oh, what, what does she do? And um, I said, oh, she's like a, she tends the cows, like a milkmaid probably. And her name was Rosa Greta, Greto, something like that. Rosa Greto, I think her name was, and she had red hair. And he goes, okay, then let's go forward to like your late thirties. I said, okay. I said, I said, I'm, there's lots of people on, on horses with like swords and shields. I said, I can't find my family and I'm fighting like these people, loads of them. And I'm looking for my family. I can't find them. They're all gone and the farm's gone. And then suddenly it's just gray. Everything's gray. There's no, there's no crops there's no house there's no family nothing and then he said go go to your 40s i said i'm on the floor there's lots of men with like swords and sticks and i'm stand, i'm laying there and they're standing above me like off a rock formation mountain or something like that and he said what are they doing i said they, they got me i said i was asking too many questions where my family were and they finished me off and he goes, go into your 50s. I said, there's no 50s. I said, there's nothing. I must have died then. So he said, okay, we'll go to your, the, the last 10 seconds of your life. And he goes, tell me what it's like. I said, I, I can't breathe. I'm in pain all down my left side. I said, that's it. And he said, oh, you've just passed over. What do you see? And I say, it's all light. I said, there's people in like, like neck curtain like robes and you can see them and we're Charles. just like and we're just like floating around and i said oh there's suddenly like animals like dogs and that coming through but they they weren't the same they were like coming in like the head and then vanishing again like this coming back and forth and he said what did you learn from your time in this life and i said to protect my family and i fucking burst into tears i was fucking bawling yeah i didn't know this at the time he goes right i'm bringing you back now now three two one go and i was fucking drool dripping with fucking tears i was screaming what the fuck this is all on camera so i can't wait to see the footage or oh, it's gonna be oh. embarrassing he put me through fucking healing for like a long time after as well i still sat there he had to heal me on all different levels you know <laughs> It was fucking shocking. I'm like, oh my god. I Honestly, I could have listened. I could have listened to you talk about that story for for ages. Because Mark and Rich, they didn't have nothing special, and they didn't have any like. Rich said it was emotional afterwards, but I was sort of like living it. Maybe this is the pain I was looking. I felt when I lost no, my looking family. For it. Yeah, and I'm like, cause and maybe got, because you you wasn't in a good state anyway. Yeah, well, I think that's I think that's clear, healed me. To be fair. Because I felt fine afterwards, you know. I feel a lot better now, but at the weekend I was still quite miserable. But as soon as that, like, the emotion coming through, and it's like, oh my god! Oh, he's mental. I've, I've made a video anyway of, of the road trip, and I'm just waiting for the footage to come through so I can put bits in the middle of it. Oh, I need to I, see it. I need to see it. When I had it, I know, man. I don't. People oh, don't laugh at me. Well, no, why? Why? It's because I'm fucking bawling on camera. <laughs> yeah, but how much? Like, how much is it? What is it? How much is it to have that done? Um, 
it was a discounted rate of 45 when for the event for the weekend oh my god i'd love to have it done but some people pay 100 pounds some people say pay 60 but yeah it's um and what's the science behind it like it's not what i thought it's obviously your subconscious has to fill the gaps i suppose i mean i don't know that's what i'm just guessing oh see Um, i i'd love to have it done because i i i've always felt i've had another life always Always yeah, probably, felt I had no life. Probably had. They said I sounded like I was in Gladiator. Like, I've always felt like I've <laughs> known something else. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. And he asked me what country I'm in. I, I said Italy. You sound so, Italy? You, oh, I yeah. was going to say Italy. Oh, yeah. And my name was Ruben. That's it. My, I forgot my own name. My name was Ruben. Yeah. So, yeah. As soon as you said the two names, I was like, Italy. 100% Italy. Rosa Greto and Josephine, but I found out my mum's something, my mum's nan or something, or something about my mum was Josephine. I didn't know that until I got. Have you got Sunday, you? Sunday have you night. got any Italian in you or any? I don't know. I've always thought... we've done that. My dad did it, and he's all like Sweden, Norway, Viking stuff. There is family yeah, but... in France, Scotland. But that's as far as I know. That's as far wide it goes. But that's who knows? crazy. Yeah. So take it back, run it back to a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Like where did it start? Everything, just whatever you want to disclose. But what do you mean? What ha- What happened for for you just to slump? I can't remember what it was about. Did I speak to you about it? We spoke briefly, and we spoke briefly, and you said, I just said well, "I'm not kids. feeling." I can't remember. No, if it happened. no. It wasn't. It was. I think it wasn't long after you went to visit. It was after you come oh, back from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty much. I think the weekend after that. The Easter Easter holiday. Yeah. You said I'm not feeling. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. What. Well, also what i was thinking this is just a coincidence but maybe true around that time i brought something into my house from my car which i'm selling yeah i have sold it now it's going on saturday and it's been in my bedroom since about that time and i'm thinking i thought about it on saturday night while i was at the convention i'm thinking fuck me that's that's been in my room since then and I've felt shit since then so I've got a Dybbuk box just there and I'm thinking maybe oh, not so it, it may just be anything but it could be that it could be just be a coincidence I don't know but I just thought oh <laughs> never know you know no but that's going and I feel better today I felt better yesterday so yeah on monday i cleaned because i had my day off because i got back late sunday night so i booked monday off and change your bed in completely sorted all my clothes out hung them all up put everything away in the drawers sorted bits and bobs out so i sort of cleansed my room in a mm-hmm. way of like spring clean as they call it i suppose so maybe that helped as well i don't know but then you know is it is it just one thing or is it a bunch of different things or is it just you can't put your finger on it of why you were just the way you was things going on with two of my kids um yeah that's okay. they're not they're not majorly bad um but obviously it's sometimes it's a worry and i don't like having <laughs> any issues any hassle in my life so when not that my kids are but obviously they're dealing with shit so then i have to deal with shit sort of thing mm-hmm. So that could be one of the things. Do you feel um, like maybe it's out of your control? So oh, they're, you they're both they're both out of my control. So does you both, think that causes children. causes you more pain because you can't control it? Yeah, because... and I know people people say don't worry about what you can't control, but obviously with family and that you can't help that, or close friends but... and that you you still have to deal with them issues. 
But then, you know, it doesn't stop though, does it? Even senses no. don't worry. You know, it's easy to say. Not it's like, easy all right, then, see you later. Yeah, that doesn't work like that. But it is, they are very, one, one of the issues is being sorted out. Good. Um, Good. More bits sorted out today, so that was good. Um, I can probably announce it because it's been announced, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's been announced, isn't it? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I am going to be a granddad. Ooh. At, at the ripe old age, I'll just be 45, just just 45 just 45 when just 45 when my daughter has her child so obviously congratulations thank you <laughs> uh, <laughs> i mean you've got the back for it right so <laughs> you're already hunching <laughs> you're already getting old my friend oh okay i wonder what you're on about then i'm not quite is it like is it yeah is it like <laughs> A few, a few more, a few more, few more years of doing the job that you're doing, you'll be, it'll be like quasi mode. Fucking wheelchair, carry on, or it'll make me really strong. So there you go, Popeye. Popeye, yeah. <laughs> but I've been, I've been taking Shilajit in the morning on tablets. Ooh, it seems not the drink. No, because uh, I can't stand that tar shit. So I bought these tablets, and yeah, we spoke about them, didn't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm the other week and uh taking them in the morning seems to give me lots more energy and i don't really feel as tired in the day anymore because before i was like oh, struggling to fucking walk or i had no energy admittedly there's not fucking three funerals a day anymore so that's good that's gone way down so that might be another fact good for lots of reasons <laughs> <laughs> yeah people aren't dying as much so that's a good thing everyone stay alive um but yeah, I'm eating more fruit at work now for breakfast, so that's good. Good. Just trying to keep the body Remain. healthy, you know. So you wouldn't say it's not. You wouldn't say it's been your mental health over the past couple of weeks. It's been more just. It is. No, it's not my mental health. I've got no issues with mental health at all. I just let the negative bits of every every. Mm -hmm. thing that happens I collect them bits like um, sweet shops but... taking sweets like at Halloween yeah I'll just I don't I don't pass over the negative and look at the positive I take the negative bit to me just carry you just carry stuff yeah until it, which, until it becomes too heavy yeah and then I just think oh, yeah which I haven't done for nearly two years so it's like I said that was like a regular thing for me but I've been really positive, which is very unusual for me, <laughs> as you know. But that's that's but that's a good thing though, because sometimes, everyone, you know, life can't always be fucking easy and great and rosy. It just doesn't work like that. You you have to take the good with the bad. Of course you do. And it's, it that's all about the balance, isn't it? It's about how you look at things. Yeah, I mean, I'd always wanted to be a Buddha. Not the fat bloke, but like the religion, <laughs> the religion, but I can't, I can't take, they are Buddhist. so, so positive and everything like your kid dies. Oh yeah, but you've got another one. It's fine. Like be really positive. You know, I can't do that. I can't, I can't, every but, situation there's a positive for it. I can't deal with that. So I can't, I can't go into Buddhism and all that, which as much as I like to, I think it's brilliant. But I think it takes you know. something like that takes a lot of patience though. Oh yeah, and a lot so, of training, a lot of from birth. Patience and discipline and No, yeah, I, I wouldn't even that. necessarily I wouldn't necessarily from birth. I would say How long do you reckon? You know you I think anybody could do it if they Five wanted years? to. I think it's a process that would take you so far into being a whole different person. Because say, for example, you have issues with addiction, but yet you want to turn into self-disciplined with that sort of behavior where you're thinking, right, everything I do has to be positive. It has to have a rea every action as a reaction. Yeah, That's going to take you years to master. Oh, yeah. And to be honest, 
they spend, you know, they spend all their life doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, through everything, you know, so no wife, no, no, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no wife, no kids. No, nothing off the, not off, no flicks off the wrist, nothing. Complete. <laughs> no, you walk, walk around dribbling. <laughs> this is just too man, much. Walk around, <laughs> walk around with fucking some heavy bollocks, man. <laughs> yeah, blue balls. <laughs> but then, I, I just think, it's all in the balance, right? Like you're gonna have times where you're up, where you're down. There could have been a perfectly explanation to what you said of why you felt as negative as you did. But then at the same time, I think it's okay to feel like that though. It's all right just to fucking take a step back for a second and go, actually, hold on. It's, I'm just, I'm not doing it today. I don't want to do it. Hmm. I did. I, I listened to. Um... Dapper laughs on a podcast from Liam Tufts that does it. I like it. Yesterday, while I was mowing, and he was talking about because Dapper's got ADHD, etc. His mm-hmm. brain, he wait, he doesn't sleep much because he he worries about everything, everything he needs to do, blah blah. What's happening? So what he does at night, he writes down everything he's thinking about on paper before he gets into bed. So everything he needs to do the next day or the following week or whatever, anything he's currently thinking about that might keep him awake, he writes it all down. So when he goes to bed, the brain's like, yeah, you already know about that. So what are you doing with your light? <laughs> but that's a good thing, though. Oh, no, that's, a list that's next, a way of dealing Making with a list it. for the next day, prepping yourself to what you've got to get done in, in order of priority as well. Because that's yeah. another thing. That a lot of people do, and I just don't. I don't think that even that's just ADHD. I think that could be anything. Is the fact that yeah, you'll go right tomorrow. You go tomorrow. I've got to get up. I've got to get dressed, but I know I need to put the washing on because I need that shirt for tomorrow night. And you don't do it, so then you push things back, and you go right now. I'll do that later. Like oh, like do you know when your car needs MOT, and, and you think oh, I'll book it, I'll book it, and I'll put it off, and I'll put it off. Yeah. It's like fuck, I need to do it. Like I've been, I've been needing to put in my car in for a service for fucking weeks, and every morning I'll go, I'll ring them tomorrow morning. I'll get up, ring them, and do it. Have I done it? Have a fuck. <laughs> I've done an extra, I've done an extra thousand miles since my service was due. Aye. And I was just like, because I just put it off for yeah. no reason. There's no reason behind it. Oh. My brain will, my brain will find anything to do. I think, I would say, I think it's good to maybe, like you said, get it off your chest, get it out of your brain because your brain's a thing that's going to keep you awake. And if you don't sleep enough, then you're going to get, you're going to be drained for the day, the next day, and it's just going to be a cycle that you catch up on. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's not a good thing. So I might try to do that when I'm feeling shit. I might write down why I feel shit. That could work. Oh yeah. That, but then if you do that, that's that's pretty much 90% of the problem is if you write it down, you write it down in an order of, okay, what is it? What can I do about it? How can I fix it? Yeah. And you do that with every single problem. You've 90% solved it already. I remember doing this when my first girlfriend dumped me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wrote down every day how I was feeling. And each day, over the weeks, was getting less. Shit. <laughs> no, like had, the, a, li- had two wanks today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, the list was getting smaller and smaller as time went on, as things were fixing, as as things were going, processing in my brain, it was getting better. So, you know, you can then you can also visibly see. Oh, my problems aren't as bad anymore. I feel better, and I can look mm-hmm. at it, and it looks like I'm doing better. I think time will heal most things. Most, you know, yeah, you, yeah, most things. I'm not going to say everything, but most things, no. if you give everything enough time, your your brain will do two things. It, first of all, it will try and explain it, and then you'll try and rationalise it, how to live without it, or how to live with it. 
you know yeah we all have this subconscious of things are going to go wrong thing is you know what can go wrong will go wrong every time yeah just because you've but, worn them, that t-shirt again doesn't mean to say that wouldn't have happened no it, yeah, it's, it's people, gonna happen that's how we that's how the human brain works sometimes they, oh that fucking happened because i put them shoes on today the last time i put them shoes on this went wrong and it, it, it we're fucking it, weird anything anything can happen like that anything yeah. anything can happen i remember i remember one night i left my house or well, I was leaving my house to go to the gym okay and i stalled did something got talking anyway dr- drove my went to a45 you know the well number roundabout where mcdonald's is yeah 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 just on there literally five minutes before four car crash yeah in my head that's nothing to do with me right it, it, it isn't it's nothing to do with me i i might not you know my, i might have come behind that i might have gone in front of it i don't know but i always look at things like that as you know that's a good thing that you did what you did i don't go that's a sign i go fucking hell man putting the bins out and unloading the dishwasher before you left was a good idea wasn't it would you have normally done it then not necessarily no it's it normally when you go out, it's, it's normally when you can't you, you can't find your keys or your phone's missing or, or you go looking for something fuck say where'd i put that i need to go and then it goes missing because in my my brain anyway and then it's it, and then it's there it goes it's missing because your time is not up yet and that would have happened so whenever things happen like that for me i always think oh we'd have probably died on the way to work or died to go there so i'm happy i don't care you know oh that's man. the way i look at it because i've so I, many so many little things in, in my life i've done that's that that's how that's how the spirit guide works who's who's with you for your whole life they keep you on that path that you were planned to be on because i think we're all our lives are already planned and mapped out and we have a yeah path i've to stay on and if you go they will step in when you're you're in danger basically and they will make i you think lose. your keys will disappear your phone yeah. will f- break or you'll drop your phone and you'll do something else that is when they step in i know that i've been in a couple of situations in my life whether whether it's doing something physical or something but i know there's a couple of times i, I could have died i know that 100 percent. if i if i wouldn't have done something different i could have died i remember when i when i not long past driving i and you remember what my car was like my first car your, your fabio the the non the non-starter the i remember driving on the yeah i remember driving on the m1 at night left hand lane because i wasn't quite used to motorway yet yeah milton Keynes coming back to northampton uh on my own luckily my wife and my daughter were in her car in front and i was just driving my car back because i met them from work so where we used to work i went from there to milton Keynes. it's closer yeah drove back and i remember there was left hand lane dark and i remember driving in the left hand lane anyway no there's no hard shoulder and i remember there being a car broken down yeah. and i mean i was but it had no hazards on oh fuck and it was o- it was only that i seen the shoes with like fluorescent shoes light up when my headlights hit it so I braked, and I must have been five meters behind him. But I've, there's no hard shoulder, so I'm there. So yeah. I've now got to get I've now got to get back on to a busy motorway from standstill because he's in front of me and he's broken down. Oh, you you actually stopped there. You didn't slow down and swerve. You no no I stopped. Oh, I came to stopped. a stop. Fucking hell. So it came to a stop five meters behind him only because I've seen his shoes. Like I didn't see it, I, you know, and then managed to get off and get on my way and it was easy. But, you know, if I, I just, I was like, fucking hell, man. If I didn't, if I wasn't fully looking. Yeah, you wouldn't I always it. think, I always, and my mind always goes back to that. Always goes back to that and goes, fucking hell. 
like you were you were new driving and you had that experience like you could have been a statistic I, <laughs> yeah at the beginning <laughs> wow but i definitely know i've had a couple of um couple of situations i i remember oh god i remember there was a time when me and my daughter was outside in the garden and I had, you know, like hooks on the back of the gate where you hang stuff. Mm. Anyway, I had, I had a spade on the back of the gate and it was at the back, it was, it was the back gate. And anyway, my daughter too, literally went like that with a spade, pulled it forward and it come off the loop and went straight into the ground this far away from her toes. And I was just like, what the fuck? Made a mass. I mean, I mean, it, it split the slab. Fucking so it was, and I was just like, oh, no. So that was it. I ripped the entire hooks down, ripped Final them all down. Destination fucking situation is going on there. Bin, I literally bin the shovel. I just binned it. I was like, okay, it's gone. Fuck you, shovel. <laughs> Get oh, out of my garden. Because you, you do in most things, like, you know, I know I've, I've definitely fought, you know, I've fallen from a few heights before or could have fallen really bad. Hmm. I think the only time I, I've only had, I think I had two crashes in my van, work van, when I drove, and one I nearly crashed on. I was going to Cornwall, it's about five o'clock in the morning, it's at Sixfields, coming up, cinema is on the right, coming up, you go straight over to Sainsbury's and Costa and all that. Mother care. Oh, I wanted to go left. I was following my dad, and my dad went round, and this car was in front. But he was—he suddenly became all over the road, and then he just slammed his brakes on. And I was like, not expecting that. We were coming up to the roundabout, but we weren't there yet. So I swerved to the right really quickly, and it was wet as well. And I skidded, nearly hit the the metal barrier on the other side. Luckily, it was. I managed to straighten up and I was fucking bibbing and shouting at this. It was just, uh, I thought, you fucking tell why the fuck did you stop there? I thought, oh, good old Mario Kart fucking got me practicing, you know? And I'm like, wow. And the two times I always think back, it could be, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't, obviously, that you mean you could call that a near miss, I suppose. <coughs> if I wasn't looking, I'd have rammed the back of it. So I probably wouldn't have died from it. I wasn't going fast, and not like the speed you were going on the motorway. I wasn't going that fast to be honest, because I just learned. I just passed. So okay. luckily, I stopped, and it was it wasn't going that fast, and that's why. Luckily, it was a Sunday evening, and it wasn't that busy. But it was so, busy enough for me to not be able to take off from a standstill. Yeah. So it was it was a big deal. But honestly, like. There's, I always think there could, there could be times where I've had signs that fuck me, you were lucky. Like that's not that that's not your way of going. You're going to go a different way. I do think people in the car. You see everybody on their phones all the time, and thought you're going to kill somebody. I all the time, all the time. I see people on their phones, or like you know, they're doing everything they shouldn't be while they're driving. You know, whether it's—I like, remember seeing somebody fucking like leaning on <laughs> leaning on the motorway to get something out of the glove box. And I'm like, you fuck, just leave it. You do not need it. Oh, when in my van driver, I would—I used to see everything. I was remember coming back from Glasgow. I was coming in, back into England, and I was passing this other van, yeah, and it was on, obviously on his steering wheel. So I'm I'm going past him, and I'm looking, and I have a guess. What he had on his steering wheel. Poor mug. Close. It was a fucking book, like a novel. Yeah? yeah? Small print. And he was reading it on the steering wheel like this, holding it on the steering wheel and driving. And I'm like, oh my God, you're fucking reading a book. Not even a big magazine or a phone. Fucking little print book. Get I'm some like, tapes, wow. man. Fucking get some audio books. Fuck me. I thought, oh my God. I was fucking bibbing him. He's a wanker. <laughs> and another time oh. in Milton Keynes, because I was in a van, I was higher up. 
I come up I was next uh, roundabout next to some some bird and she was in um, like a black sports car with the roof off yeah and she had a fucking dildo in her <laughs> and the traffic lights like this fucking and it's like oh my god do you know what you're doing there's like people around you can obviously I was higher up I could see but even in a normal mm. car you could probably see what she was doing next to her and I'm like do you really need to do that now is that necessary can't you wait oh, till you get home <laughs> fucking hell. hell and it's like oh my god oh that's that's the shock most shocking thing I've ever seen in a car <sighs> I don't even so, top that <laughs> it's like what the fuck <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> but then you know, oh fuck me! People just do stupid things. But yeah, going back to it, man, I I always think this: one, your path is rooted for you. Two, yeah, that one. No matter how much shit you're going through, there's always a way of rationalising it and breaking it down to make it less than what it is. I am, you know me. Like I'm the biggest warrior. I will. That will be my cause of death. Was you fucking died of worrying so much? If your hair's not grey yet, so you're doing well. Fucking you're bit. No, it's it's getting there. There's oh, still okay. some greys in dark, there. Dark. That's all. <laughs> um, I've just I've just got tired of worrying about shit. Do you know what? I I never thought it happened to me where I got to an age and I just got to an age where I was like, I no longer care about fitting in. I no longer care about fucking making sure that I'm dressed up for every occasion. No longer care about thinking I should have ob- objects around me that mean fuck all. I've just, yeah. I've just, it's like, and even now I feel more freer as I'm older than I've ever felt. It's good being older because, because you've got no responsibility for the, the social side. You say, I'm too old, don't want to do that. Fuck you. You can say no to everything. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't have to pretend anymore either. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't... Before, you know, work life, I would always sit back, shut my mouth, do as you're told, this is your job, do not fuck up your income, keep your gob shut, because otherwise, you know, you're going to fucking lose your job. Yeah. I say how it is now, but I also stay in my lane. So if I'm not happy about something, I'll speak up and say something. Mm. But I'm not going to offer to do extra either. I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm, you know, I'm getting paid for my job. I'm going to do my job to the best of my ability. I'm going home. No worries. Yeah. Like I'm not, I don't carry shit with me anymore. I used to carry work with me and go, oh yeah, but you know, you should think about this. And like, I just do it. I do my job best of my ability. And I'm really good at what I do. But at the same time, I don't worry about it outside work. You know, I'm not checking emails on. A, I'm not checking emails on a weekend anymore. I'm like, it'll it'll get done. But at the same time with life as well, like you said, if I don't want to do something, I'm just not doing it. I'm just, I'm not going. No. And I fucking hate people. I fucking hate people now. Like not not family, obviously, or friends, but ugh, like I don't. Do you know when you just like I don't need new people in my circle. I don't need anyone else. No. Like, I'm not going out my way. I'm not going out my way to be an arsehole, but I ain't going out my way to fucking, Please fucking kiss ass either. Just for yeah. The sake of it, yeah. Like I'll, I will say how it is. Yeah. That's the best way to be. Don't pretend. Don't be a fucking. I, don't give a, sh- I don't give a be shit anymore. True. I care about literally making memories for as long as I can. And that's it. Just, just fully enjoying the ride, and that's always. To be honest, that's always been my motto. Is just, I'm not going to do something that's just going to hinder my life and make it shit. Hmm. I just can't do that. That's not Why who I am. You? Why the fuck should you? Do, do, so, do, yeah, what, do what makes you happy in this life, because yeah, we don't talk about the life of this country. Um, yeah, you never know what's around the corner. <laughs> Let's just say that. You don't. You don't. So, but then there's good things. There's always good things around the corner. There's always good things. So, good, fi- good so, things that you can control. So that's what let's, you like. 
So I'll finish off. We'll f- talk about a positive for the end of today. So positive, yeah. Look at these. I'm Damn fuckers. What is that? Furry fucking crotch That is some pure ass granddad shit, mate. That is some granddad shit. Yeah, but yeah, but look, they got fucking. They got sport mode, granddad. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's that's definitely taking the bin bags out. That is, Fuck that's good it. for taking the bins out. I knew bought yellow ones, but I didn't. I thought I'd stick to black. <laughs> I wonder why. You, why did you change your colour from orange to orange to fucking yellow? Well, I didn't like orange because UK haunted. So, mm-hmm. fuck that shit. And then I don't know. I just I thought yellow. I don't know. Just something changed in my head. I thought, yeah, fuck, fuck orange. I like yellow now. <laughs> do, you, do you walk past oranges now in the supermarket and spit on them? <laughs> yeah, like a Tottenham shirt. <laughs> so I, so, yeah. I'm, I'm going on my first. I'm going on my first wild camping trip. Oh yeah. Um, me and my brothers um, doing two nights wild camping. We've never done it, and it's never. Do you know one of those things that's never left the group chat? What, what, it, this time, what is, what's your definition of wild camping? Not on a campsite, so in yeah, the woods, just, on a field, wherever. Yeah, so we're okay, going yeah. to I've going to that. the Peak District. Okay, yeah. And we're doing three hikes, three different hikes there. Oh, nice! Um, over the course of two nights, two days, two nights. Are you carrying your tent, etc., camping stuff with you? Yes. Oh, I see. So you're you're starting at one point. You're carrying everything. Once you've done it, you'll you'll pitch your Move tent somewhere and, else. Yeah. yeah. Once you, in the morning, you'll tidy up, carry on. Right. Okay. So we're gonna do three different walks. We're gonna go to Thor's Cave in. Oh yeah. Derbyshire. Derbyshire. That was, that was around the corner from where I went the other week. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do Witness Pass that looks really big and tall, and then we're gonna do another peak. Yeah. Um, just because one, we've always said we wanted, to, we've always said we wanted to do it, and two, it's just never left the group chat. It's always something we've talked about, and it, something in my head just went, "Do you know what? Tell them to book their days off. Tell them to book the time off work, and we'll go Friday. We're going to go early hours Friday morning, come back Sunday afternoon." And I'm, I'm in the process of gathering all the stuff, so I'm, I'm just constantly buying all the stuff, and I mean. I'm not buying it all new. I'm not buying all expensive stuff, but I mean, I mean, I'm buying a lot of it. I've vintage. Like I bought a tent. I bought, I bought hiking boots. Yeah. I bought trousers. I bought jacket. So I'm getting a stove with a little gas bottle, all that stuff. Yeah. The little knife and fork set in one. Cause you need that so, little plate. Yeah. So I've never done it. And it's always something I've wanted to do always. Cause I've always loved camping as a kid. And, yeah. I've got more chance of winning the lottery than my wife going camping. So women always say that I ain't going with you. <laughs> so I yeah, I know. <laughs> Although my, my daughter said since all the stuff's come, she's like, "Take me camping, take me." I'm like, "Okay, we'll, I'll take you. We'll go to a campsite." In the and we'll go camping. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'll take her to a campsite. And we'll do it properly yeah. and do it for a night. See if she likes it. Yeah. But it's just been something I've wanted to do for so long, and I've just never done it. And we, the more the more we've talked about it, the more we said, "Well, this is where we'd go." Because we always said we, we'd like to do, like, I'd like to do Snowden or something like that. Just because yeah. I've never I done like it. To do Snowden. And I'd like to really push myself. And everyone's like, "Yeah, it's you know, it's a lot. You don't you don't do much walking and stuff." And I've been doing more walking every day. Yeah. Because some some of the walks we're doing are like eight eight miles, ten miles. Um. So yeah, so that Last that's what I'm doing in week. June. Half a day's mowing, yeah, fuck me. He's gonna do some mowing for you. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's just something I've never done. I'm gonna go and do it, give it a try, just have a bit of a laugh with it. I'm probably gonna carry way too much stuff. I've yeah, been I looking did, I do that when I go, I always have like fucking shitloads in case this happens or in case I need that and I never fucking need it, but you never know. At one time you don't take it, you won't need it or you'll need it and it's like, oh fuck. But there's no better feeling than sitting with your ass in your tent with your little fire in front of you, cooking your fucking pizza on your frying pan or cooking your wait. burgers. That's it. 
and cook, boiling up the little stove thing so you can have a coffee. Fucking amazing. I love all that. And it's I just like... Feeling, uh, back to nature. Yeah. For me, yeah, because the thing is, me and, my, me and my brothers, what we do, we have a group chat and we literally just fucking send each other videos of fucking people building shelters, people fucking going wild camping. Yeah. And I know, obviously, there's a few grey areas of trespassing and blah, 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 but you know what? Just fucking, we're just going to do it. Get back out to nature, park the car up, fucking set off. That's good, man. When you got a date in mind? We're we're going to go in June, okay. Friday, Friday the fourteenth of June. Oh, proper day. Oh, fair enough. Cool. So yeah, yeah, I booked it in now. We've booked it in. Got got all the. They've all. They've started. It's not just me. It's not like I've just started buying the stuff by myself. They're buying stuff. So. We're gonna are, you do having, it. are you having three pop-up tents or one big tent? Or no, 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 no just three. Tents? I've got this tiny tent. I've got three this tent. Little ones, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, it's like a little tube. Yeah. Um, it's enough for a little, like a little camp mat and it's my fucking bag. And, and so lay out. I, bought, I bought a water bladder thing as well. Yeah, to carry when you're walking. So, yeah, it's just going to be, it's just going to be a laugh. So, you know, something i've never done i'm gonna give it a try i love the outdoors anyway so I, i'm sure i'll love it but i just thought yeah i'm gonna go so i'm gonna do, i'll do i'm gonna do a whole video i'm buying a little camera a little action camera to take with me and film it all yeah um i want to get i want to get a drone like a mini one yeah and i've been looking at temu because they looks like they've got some really good drones but everybody says they are good but they're impossible to fly <laughs> they're not heavy enough probably so i'm gonna like i'll get a little drone to maybe get some footage of a drone going up in the air really high and crashing yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's gonna be my thing i'm gonna give that a go this summer and that's it guys that'll be a good what? a good episode when you come back yes especially experiences and when I, se- when I send you all the footage for your editing skills. <laughs> that's, that's fine by me. When will the video be out for the trip that you've just done? Because I think a lot of people that heard this story I would also quite... probably, it... one, like to see it. And two, book probably their own past life regression. All of my footage I recorded this weekend is all, it's already set up on video. It's all ready to go. It's all f- edited. I'm just waiting to get my file from Paul and then I will put that in the middle, obviously in the timeline where it happened, edit it up because I don't want to put an hour in it because that's fucking really long and it'll be shit. So I'll put snippets in of interesting bits and then if the end is Tag not... the guy. Tag the guy as oh, well because I want to know. Paul Goddard, his name is. Yeah. Okay. Very, very, very good. Paul, please come on the show because I'd love to talk to you. If you ever get, if you ever listening, please come to the show because I've got, I've got so many questions for you. If you've got enough, then to be fair, I could probably get him on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd love yeah. to talk to him. If, 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 obviously, he does hypnotherapy, um, past life regression. So, yeah. I'd love to know more about it and one so, why the science behind it and how it works. Yeah. And not the thing is, I hate, I hate calling it science because it's not fucking science, is it? But it's not science. Sort it's of, not, can't be proven. But. The analogy of why it happens, and like you said, if you had if you had three doors, what would have happened if you said, oh, "I want to go to the middle door," or exactly. you want to go to the it's, left? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is there exactly. an option? Does that mean there's three? I had three lives, and these are my three doors. Because, because could Rich, you could Rich you have gone to all three? Possibly, if I had time. Because Mark and Rich had, had well, Mark had. Um, he told me about two lives he had. He was a bar. He owned a barber shop, and he's bald in in the 1100s. Well, they didn't have shops until like the 1800s, so I don't know how that worked. <laughs> and then also one of his other lives, he was abandoned as a child and lived on his own. <laughs> So he had at least two lives he, he went through, but maybe they weren't very in depth. I don't know. I, so. Yes, I, I mean, I, that's why I'd love to know. Because 
to me that's not scary so i'd like to i could do that i, I was do. a bit scared because i didn't know how it would work with my brain will i come back would it be someone else <laughs> so i never get that whole you're in no. i never get it i always see those videos of people like they will go and they'll go you're in and they'll literally just the head will just go and i'm yeah, like don't Whoa. forget when we had paul on the other week he mm -hmm. he's done hypnotherapy on stage and he had people doing weird shit yeah I, I, just, for me it was it's all in the mind how, how it you, works the words and which ones you plant in their head yeah because the, they the, feed it for them for a process of time yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's like yeah. A, it's like a process of who's going to be a good target audience to get that person and fully yeah. get them in i mean not everybody can be hypnotized i'm sure it doesn't always work and it took it took me about 10 minutes to be under it took mark about 20 minutes so you know, it just depends how relaxed you can be i suppose oh but see that's, that's something i need to do i need that, to do it that footage i will be putting in so when I, i'd love should, to do it hopefully and it'll, then... be this, it'll be this week so whenever it's out it will be it may even be out now when you guys are listening or watching this if it is yeah. it's did you mickey york youtube channel did you have any expectation before you did it? Did you have any ideas about anything? What I was going to be? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Like, I thought maybe I would have had something to do with Cornwall. Like, maybe King Arthur or a fisherman or something, because my family are Cornish. And that's quite interesting. Or the Scottish version of that. I don't know. But I was... a I was gladiator in Greece, uh, in Italy, so. Italy. But then, that's what I mean, like, I think, I, the thing is, I, I've got a whole backstory of years and years of where I think I've come from, or where I think yeah. I'm He's back, back in the room, people, back in the room. So, I would love to see if what I think is right. Yeah. But is that my brain telling me, yeah, yeah, it's right, because in your brain and we're going to also, play with that brain. if you went under when he was going through the, the various stages would you think oh i already know that story i'm gonna put that story in because i could have done that but i didn't have an, any clue about this story so the more i think about it i think oh maybe <laughs> i never thought of that that story at all ever so oh gotta get so interesting I've, I've honestly like i want to know more about it i really do but um guys thanks for joining us sorry about last week mickey was just taking a bit of uh, a bit time for himself and, the week and that's fine but <laughs> we're back we've just done an <laughs> it keeps buffering <laughs> let's just finish before it fucks up peace out everybody deuces See you later, motherfuckers.